So when it says product, I know I'm multiplying. This is a 3 by 2, which I think to me is just easier to do it as a 2 by 3. So I'm going to go 3n minus 6 and n squared minus 2n plus 7. When we're multiplying, it means we add. And what I notice is there's a pattern. Let me zoom that in a little bit. 3, 2, 1, when we're dealing with the exponents. 2, 1, nothing. Now, bring down the 3n cubed. Negative 6 and negative 6 is negative 12n squared. And then positive 12 and positive 21 is 33n. And then minus 42. Boom, it's C. Let's look at the next one. This time they gave us the zeros and they want us to write it as a trinomial. That means it's x minus 1, x plus 5, x minus 5. It's easiest for me to box that one out first. So I'll box it out and I get x squared minus 25. Then I'm going to go x minus 1 times x squared minus 25. I'll box it out again. x minus 1 x squared minus 25, x cubed, that's what they all say, minus 25x, minus x squared, and then plus 25. So I notice they all say x cubed, they all say minus x squared. This is what the difference is. That minus 25x plus 25, not 24. So the answer is C. Now if you look at number 29, it says solve by graphing, but there isn't a way to graph. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to plug values in. Now, I could graph it, but that just seems annoying, and I don't even have a graph. So if I plug in negative 1, half of negative 1 gives me a fraction. So I'm really hoping that's the one that isn't it, and I'm going to pick letter C to start with. So if I do half of 4, that's 2, and then 2 plus 3 is 5, but the problem is the y value is 1, so C is out. So now I'm going to try this one. Half of negative 4 is negative 2, plus 3 is 1. Check. But now that it worked for the first equation, I also have to check it for the second. It has to be like a check, check, or a yes, yes. So I do negative 3 fourths times negative 4. So let me show that one because that's a little bit more difficult. 4 on top, 4 on bottom, bye bye And a negative and a negative make a positive. So you're just left with 3 minus 2 is 1. Now I know that they've worked for both, the answer is B. Number 30, I can play the same game, but honestly, this is set up so pretty for me to solve by elimination. 6x equals 6, divide by 6, x equals 1. D happens to be the only one that has x equals 1, so I could just double check, make sure I'm good to go by taking the 1, putting it in for x. 4 times 1 plus y equals 2. 4 plus y equals 2, minus 4 minus 4, y equals negative 2. And that's what that is, so I know that I know that I know that I know that I'm good to go. 32, I notice they both have an x, so I'm left with x to the 6th minus 1. So I know it can't be a. Um, this is square root, so that would be x, x cubed minus 1, x cubed plus 1. But then when I look here, this is the difference of cubes, and this is the sum of cubes. So little parenthesis, big parenthesis. Square the first guy, square the last guy. Take them, put them together. That's the difference of cubes. The sum of cubes is the same thing. And then bring down the x. So I'm looking for an x minus 1 and x plus 1, so that's out. An x squared plus x plus 1. These look really close, but I know there's no 3 in there at all, so the answer is B. Okay, box this out. M minus 8, 12M squared minus 32M, 15M minus 40. So 12M squared, 32 minus 15 is negative 17 minus 40. Now, it was kind of more obvious to me that the answer was C, but I just want to double triple. I would hate for that one question to be the one that gave me the B and not the A. Okay, number 33, name it by degree, degree 2, which means it's quadratic. 
and the number of terms, there's one, two, three, so that's a trinomial. A linear trinomial would be, well, you can't do a linear trinomial, it doesn't make sense. 3x plus 2, I don't know, you can't do a linear, because that's a linear binomial. A cubic binomial is like x cubed plus 7x, because there's two of them. A linear monomial would be like 3x. All right, write the equation. Well, it touches at 4. That means the y-intercept is 4. Well, that's what it says here. In order to get to the next point, the next one I see that touches is right here. Since I'm going down, I know it's got to be negative. Those two are out. So I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and write 2. Negative 6 over 2 is negative 3. And as I was doing this, I actually noticed that I could have gone down 1, 2, 3, and write 1. But negative 3 over 1 is still negative 3, so it doesn't matter. The next page, there's only a couple problems, so I'll do that right now. I see a graph, but I need to solve for y. Move the x. Divide by 5. So I know that it's starting at 0. Starts at 0, starts at 0, starts at 0, starts at 0. And then I'm going to be going down 3, right 5. So that's up, that's up down one. Ooh, this is tricky because it's going by two. So let me zoom that in a little bit. So this is going down three, right five. So if I went down three, that's right there. And right five is right there. So it looks like C, but let me double triple. Down three, right five. Oh yeah, it's C. Number 36 it says y equals 1, so I need to go along the y-axis and find a 1. Well, this is along the x-axis. This is along the y-axis, but the problem is it's touching at negative 1, and that's positive 1. This one is touching at the x-axis of 1, and I'm not just going to assume it's d. I want to check. It's touching at the y at 1, so it is, in fact, d.